Eastleigh lost at the Silver Lake 2-1 to Oxford City. They've only played each other twice in their whole history. Back in 2011, also in the FA Cup, Oxford City, the victors at Eastleigh 3-2 again. So in terms of the meetings between the two sides, Oxford certainly have the better record left centre-back position. Into the middle to Atangana. And a bit of Oxford pressure, backs in defence, oh, and the ball has been lost. And here comes Josh Parker into the penalty area, right side, crosses it across the face of goal, and somehow that's been missed, and it comes out towards this near side. Oxford keeping the attack alive. Coyle, left-footed ball into the box, a flick on, up, and it's gone over, over the bar. And that was a nice sort of little back heel, trying to flick it over Joe McDonald's bar, but that back from... Ryan Clampin as the ball is towards the back post and McCallum tries to get his head onto it. Falls to Maguire on the volley. Oh, and it's gone just wide. The fans in front of me thought that that had gone in as it bounced off the advertising hall things behind the goal and then hit the back of the net. Quick look at scores elsewhere. In a second as the ball is played up towards McCallum. Two hands in the back, nothing given. Quigley turns away from his man. He gets a loose ball into the box. Quigley shoots and curls it into the bottom corner. Spitfires 1 0 up here at the Silver Lake. McCallum seemingly pushed in the back. It rolled through the loose ball to Quigley. Good feet on the edge of the box. Left of the D. Shaped to shoot on his right foot and curled a low shot into the bottom corner. And the Spitfires take the lead against Oxford City. It's 1 0 here at the Silver Lake. Humphrey Ewers feeds it down the left hand side to Coyle. Up towards the byline, towards the front post, and it. Eastley just about get it clear up towards halfway, and that's going to be a bit of a foot race between Michio and Quigley, who's really got his tail up, plays a good ball into Maguire, and now it's three on one. Maguire beats it down the right to Quigley, into the box. He's got a man to his right. He plays him. Oh, and it's gone out of play. A diving challenge in the middle. Oh, you thought that would turn up as a goal. All ends up. It should be 2-0 to Eastley. It was a three-on-two, three-on-one situation as Maguire fed quickly down the right side of the penalty area, about 12 yards out, got it towards the edge of the six-yard box, brought Chris Hague out, played it to his left. In the A34, corner for Oxford, towards the front post, it's really, really poor, and it's out to McCallum, and now Eastley might be able to break, and McCallum feeds it to Boldervine, and Boldervine's up against Canis Carroll on in his own. He's got a chance to play into Franchaletta to his right, into the box, Franchaletta right-hand side, across the face of goal, towards the back post, it goes away from McCallum, powerful cross. And it goes out of play for a goal kick. Uh, Blackmore and Joe Tessa on 96.1 FM. Hans, uh, Dorset DAB. As the header forward by McCallum. Over the top. Lovely goal. Scott Quigley has got himself a second. Long ball forward by Joe McDonald. Flipped on by Paul McCallum. Quickly got himself into the penalty area. Chris Hay came out with the ball bouncing. Quickly is just absolutely perfectly lobbed it over the Oxford keeper and it's bounced into the back of the net. And with about 15 minutes of normal time to go, Eastley have doubled their lead. And it looks like maybe they've got themselves the three points this evening. One done and starting to turn the screw. Tafari Moore down this right hand side. We've got Fonku for company. In the middle to Coyle, who swap wings. Shapes to go on his right, goes on his left. Moore up against Clampin. Going to go onto his left foot. Coyle out towards Fleet. Can he get a ball into the box or is he going to go for goal? Feeds Parker in the box, right side. Tries to hit it across the face of goal, blocked. In comes the cross from Moore towards the edge of the box. Coyle onto his left foot, away from Atangana. Shoots, brilliant goal! What a strike that is from Lewis Coyle! Collected the ball on the edge of the box, right of the D, got away from Atangana on his left foot, has curled an absolute beauty into the top right-hand corner. And just like that, Oxford City have themselves away back into the game. It's easily two, Oxford one. Fleet, back to Humphrey Ewers, all the play on that far side, about 30 yards from the Oxford City goal. Back to Parker, 25 yards, drives towards the edge of the box, gets away from his man, he's brought down into the penalty area, free kick. Eastley supporters thought that that maybe Josh Parker went down too easily and Oxford City have yet another chance with a set piece about 25 yards out left of the D. Definitely an op a good, good opportunity for a right footer to try and bend this into the top corner. And there's a bit of a hush now. Four man wall for Eastley, just in line with the penalty spot. Lateral hunt for years with about three minutes of normal time to go. Everyone back for Eastley in the penalty area. Whistle goes. Humphrey Ewers steps up, blocked, edge of the box. Humphrey Ewers with the deflection, scores! A 
and Oxford City have come from two goals down to be level at 2-2 and lateral Humphrey Ewers has scored the goal and Eastley's 2-0 lead goes up in a puff of smoke took the free kick, hit the wall, bounced back towards the edge of the box hit it first time, bottom right hand corner nothing Joe McDonald to do, he was scrambling Eastley 2, Oxford City 2 those Oxford City fans going absolutely ballistic on the opposite side of the pitch as they make another change to Oxford City. They form something on the byline. Attack still going. Quigley up against three men, deflected towards the edge of the box. Quigley still wins it. Boldervine now with the first time cross. Deflects to the old edge of the box to Atangana. Left of the D and Clampin gets the ball taken off his toes by. Pierre Foncou, Carter wants the ball down the left, Clampin finds him, up against his man, he's going to have to come up onto his right hand side, flicks it in towards Clampin, receives the ball, left corner of the box what can he do, can Charlie Carter, Boldervine, 25 yards out, Boldervine feeds it to Quigley, down the right channel, across the face of goal, and it's gone into the near post side next